That's it. That is that's yeah. It's that. It's G, G, yeah, that. <laughs> it's that's true. That's true though. That's it's, I, I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a huge fan of having to pay for something after I've already paid for it. We're kind of in a weird position as gamers these days because many games expect more money off us after we've already given them lots of money. It'll be no surprise though that big games companies really like that idea and they're about to double down on it. In a recent investor call, Square Enix CEO and DLC boss fight, Yasuke Matsuda said his company, the publishers behind the likes of Final Fantasy, Tomb Raider and until recently Hitman, wants to shift focus onto games as a service. What's that? Well, the short version is, it means they want you to keep spending money on games for a long time after you actually buy it. So how does that manifest itself? Well, microtransactions mainly, but also the likes of things like season passes, expansions, and even DLC. Then you've got the traditional MMO subscriptions like Square Enix has in place for Final Fantasy XIV. But then, well then, you've got the whole episodic content bollocks that they put in place for 2016's Hitman. With Hitman, Square Enix did not release a game. They released chunks of a game, one at a time, which when pieced together, with multiple purchases or using a single season pass, you eventually got a full complete package. Eventually. Matsuda told investors that the company believes this is the way that gaming is going these days. We'll be paying for our games over time, he believes, almost subscribing to them rather than outright buying them. He said, titles that have become global hits recently have tended to be offered via the games as a service model, and we believe this is going to be the mainstream model for gaming in the future. In developing future titles, and this is the good bit, we will approach game design with a mind to generate recurring revenue streams. Now, recurring revenue streams simply means keeping the cash flowing in after a game is released with things like microtransactions, DLC, and even subscription models. Well, this is bollocks, isn't it? I mean, designing a game with monetization in mind is never a good thing. If you're designing a game around microtransactions, when has that ever been good for anyone? other than the company making it. Designing it around is the most annoying thing. They're writing a story and then they're specifically thinking, so which part of the story can I cut off for later? They can't focus on a game as one chunk anymore. They've got to think of like, like how a TV show has to think of a cliffhanger, what's gonna keep them coming back? Yeah. So you can expect lots more cliffhangers, lots more part one and two. This is it's, really it's, fucking annoying. It's, it's, it's mechanics and systems as well, like um, progression systems, customization, anything that allows them to add more stuff to it for you to pay for. If you've got XP, then they could let you pay a little bit more to gain more XP mm -hmm. quicker and things like that. There's so many ways that they can do this and none of those things sound appealing to me as a gamer, other than customization, I quite like that. I really hate how cocky they are to tell us that. It's like a James Bond bad guy telling James Bond how he's going to kill him before he yeah. does it. So just remember to either get prepared to buy a game and a season pass or just don't f***ing do it. People who are sitting there playing GTA Online in 2017 and spending the money, you're the people that are making this so appealing to everybody else. So don't buy a shark card, man game arrives and it's you know and it's steadily improved over time that's their mentality towards it rather than we have to make this a complete finished product they want it's not a product in their eyes it's a service mm -hmm. they want you to experience the game as a service keep coming back to it keep playing it keep spending your money on the same game they're thinking we only need to pitch the pilot get a strong pilot and then we can charge them for episodes two and three and four so we know that hitman's episodic because square enix did that they did that and there's rumors that Final Fantasy VII, one of the most beloved games of the last 20 years, yeah. coming back episodically. So you can see that they're already planning it and it's really, really insulting. It's really insulting. It is. The idea of games as a service is of course nothing new. For years now, companies like EA, Activision and Ubisoft have made a concerted effort away from games as products that you buy and own to services that you buy access to. This is what they want because for one thing, legally, it puts them on a very favourable footing. In 2012, UK games lawyer Jazz Perwell from the law firm Osborne Clark told IGN the legal position is unclear whether games are legally classified as goods or services. If we're talking about box product games, there's a good argument the physical box product is a good, but we don't know definitively if the software on it, or more generally software which is digitally distributed, is a good or a service. The problem with this is, while publishers treat games as services, gamers generally treat games as goods. Ubisoft are probably leading the charge when it comes to taking the games as a service idea forward. Their live game strategy has already given us less traditional single player offline experiences and more games like The Division, Ghost Recon Wildlands, 
Steep, Forerunner and The Crew. They are all games with a big focus on online play and of course some form of monetization in the form of microtransactions, season passes, DLC, things like that. Ubisoft's riveting new logo announcement, which aside from having us all pissing our trousers with excitement, I mean it's monochromatic for fuck's sake. In very much a new year, new you kind of move, Ubisoft's new logo kind of signals their new shift onto digital games, live games, multiplayer, games that you will keep coming back to and paying money for. Uh, games like Overwatch and uh, GTA Online, they're huge success stories because of the, the way that they can hold on to their, their player base is amazing. And that's what all of these companies want. They want that kind of loyalty and that retention so they can monetize it afterwards and keep getting your money back. And those success stories is what's driving this kind of philosophy now, games as a They service. just think that we're f***ing idiots, don't they? Yeah. How many For Honours is it going to take before they realise games do well because we want to play them, yeah. not because they want us to want to play them. We don't come to the game because we go, hmm, steal. That sounds like a, a great idea. Yeah. But Ubisoft, it doesn't work. No one f***ing cares about your games yeah. anymore. And if they do, they're very quiet about it because it's not like The Witcher 3, which the praises are being sung. I have not seen one comment, and bear in mind, this is our f***ing job. Someone say, Game of the Year, Ghost Recon's Wildlands. Not one person. No I, one cares. I've got to say, I've, heard, I've seen someone say exactly that. Oh, for <laughs> So why do they want to do this? Well, it's because the cost of development is huge now, like the AAA budget's gone through the roof. And the price of games has basically stayed the same for a long time. It hasn't adjusted over time with inflation and things like uh, just overall development costs. So they need to monetize games in a different way. Because if a game comes out and sells two million, that can be a disappointment in this day and age. And that's bollocks. That's the kind of thing that Square Enix has done itself, saying that, you know, the games come out and it's not. It's only sold two million. What a disappointment. You know, that's outrageous, but that's part of the that's part of the issue. Various ways of looking at games as a service and how to do it right. Xbox Game Pass, for example. Yeah, very good. This is an idea of streaming, like how Netflix is. No one's mad about Netflix. No one gets mad that you stream and stuff because it's nice, easy access. It's not like you buy a, a DVD or a, a DVD. <laughs> buy a Blu-ray and then halfway through the film it says, unlock the rest of the film for yeah. just three pounds. It's not like that, it's a different service. And I think that is the, the way to bring the games as a service integrated into the gaming world yeah. without pissing people well, off. That's a very good point though. This is this is exactly, it's gaming trying to do what music and movies and TV has already done. They've already got streaming in the bag. That's the way, that is the way that we consume those media basically now these days. It's the way that we do it. So the gaming is still like it's cottoning onto that, but it just hasn't figured out the way to do it yet. Mm -hmm. And you know, monetizing things afterwards with microtransactions is one thing, but breaking, a, breaking Hitman up into episodes is yeah bollocks that is the absolute worst way to yeah. do it do not do that again but there are good ways consumer friendly ways of doing it that will also benefit you by giving you that recurring income Netflix is commissioning things left right and center now because it's got shit loads of our money mm. and we're fine I'm happy to give them my money every month because it's worth it it's good value for me yeah that's exactly. what they need to nail they need to give us good value I, products I mean does this sound like such a bad idea so you've got your games and then you've got Xbox Game Pass so you pay there and then you get the games now imagine if then they started making Xbox Game Pass exclusive exclusives you could only stream them yeah. then all of a sudden it would be slowly getting integrated in you can have that for free microsoft right but halfway through a game i think that's the problem it's when you buy something and you make that immediate purchase you're not aware that really you're in it for the long haul. Yeah. I think that is where they're going wrong and pissing everybody off. The breaking off and, and removal of content because they want us to pay a bit more money for that down the line, that's not good. You can surely manage that in a different way. You can surely handle that in a way that's a bit better than you need to buy this in episodes. That's fucking bollocks, I don't like that. It's sad as a gamer and somebody that is really into video games, they know that people don't like it, mm. they don't care. They don't care about what we have to say. And that's the real thing that's just a bit of a shame, isn't it? Like yeah. I say, it's like a Bond villain. They don't give a f about anything. It's blatant. For Honor is, is not so much a game as a platform to make money from you down the line. That's why nobody, that's, that's why it flopped. Mm. And that's what they can't see yet. That's what they can't figure out. Mm. Okay, well, this has been a spectacularly cheerful Saturday show so far. Bring back gas. That's what I'm sure you're well, yeah. Where's Where's Gaz? Where's Gaz? Give Mike a rest, innit? Right, let's look at some comments. After all that. So let's look at some comments then. First up on our EVE Online video this week, Chris Plummer says, Pretty good, guys. When are you going to make a Let's Play series? I'd love to see you guys all sit down, play new or old games. I don't know. Make it yours. 
Well, cheers, Chris. Um, yeah, we've got some like Twitch streaming stuff going on yeah. at the moment, and uh, we have done Let's Play-ish type stuff, but more like first impression videos, I suppose. Stretch, that is me. It is a stretch. Okay, we haven't done Let's Play no. type stuff. Um, but we, like it's something we're looking into. Looking into. We're still yeah. a very young channel, after all. Yeah. Very new. Yeah. We recently started a Twitch, so there's four of us, and we're going to be trying to work out a routine to do it more often. Yeah. And then we'll start Without, growing you know, it from there. Compromising this quality content. You got it, buddy. But yeah, keep an eye out on our Twitch. We should have the link to it here, and then you can look at more stuff. What games we get to play and things like that. We're going to work on that and try and integrate a real system on Twitch and get involved with it. Don't worry, go. So next up, also in our EVE Online video, Darko <sighs> Mihalovsky says, It's funny this guy stole the ship worth thousands of dollars and they still have a civil discussion, while in other games they go in a tantrum because you steal two kills from them. Yeah, that's the, that's something that really stood out for me as well. The way that, um, was it TikTok? Or TikTok, TikTok Toxic, uh, yeah. I think his name the was. The way that he, he was such a gentleman through the whole thing. He was like, well, you know, I thought we were friends, mate. What are you doing? He t I feel like he completely was like, that is the best way to get back at someone, like in a classy way. He just completely took the wind out of his sails and like, man, you kind of hurt my feelings. Either like, that or he's broken. And he has got he's nothing not, nah, left. He's, he's, One or the other. Nah, he's, he's not broken. He's, he's put on a brave he's, face. He's big top TikTok or whatever. He's, he's like the best pilot He didn't in the game. get 400 kills on the mini hunt just for nothing. Exactly. He's, he's, probably, he's probably got another 400 on another ship and he's, yeah. he's, he's over it. Next up, commenting on the GTA roleplay video. Atheon times Conflux, to give him his full name. Why are you uploading at midnight? You guys don't want me to sleep, do you? Listen, we get this a lot, okay? We are on UK time, right? Yeah. So we, I think I wasn't like checking with you then, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. We're on UK time, yeah. Sorry. We are on UK time, and that means that uh, we have to work to a UK schedule. We work office hours. We work like nine to five. I've been holding this team. We're respectable time. guys, is what you're saying. We're not slouching around at midnight, yeah. trolling through videos of Grand Theft Auto Five, all right? This is full time work for us. We do it. We do, it's like office hours, so we're in nine to five. Polish. <laughs> That's his best shirt. So next up on our Nintendo Sell Empty Boxes controversy, longtime contributor Frederick Anderson says, The original Ken has a hidden character version, Pacifist Ken. Unlock him instantly at the start of any match by not moving a stick or pushing any buttons. I see you, Frederick. Yeah, you leave all that. these good comments. Then. I'm masterful. Strategy. Violent Ken yeah. is still... Still funny now. Violent Ken is the funniest thing. I, I, like, we were, we were coming up with a lot of, like, you know, aggressive Terry, no, aggressive Chris, Brutal Terry, all these kind of things. I sometimes forget that Violent Ken is the actual one. Like, I've, <laughs> I, forget, I, sometimes, I have to check myself, like, did we make that up? Next up, commenting on the podcast episode 12, Vaporwave is Life says, If you are Finnish, it's pretty good gaming. Well, thank you for the very coherent and uh, legible comment. Vaporwave is life. So commenting on the Uzbekistan Bans Games video, Richard Denton comments, Oh look, the king is back. Yeah, listen, I replied to that and uh, said, Bitch, I haven't here all along or something like that. Um, just thought it was funny, like, the king would be me and I've been here all along, Jake's gone and I thought you'd get that from the, from the coin. You didn't get that from the coin, it's my fault. It was poor execution of the joke. Comment in. For that I apologise. Yeah, you, you commented on something manned by four men without context yeah. and then didn't understand. You're like yeah. a dad. That's like a dad, totally, like a dad text. It was totally a dad move, yeah. <laughs> so that's your lot for this Saturday. What do you think of Square Enix's total, total bullshit? Maybe you don't think it's bullshit. Let us know down in the comments below. Get involved either way. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. We've got plenty more content just here. There's also a link to our Patreon if you want to help support us make videos every single day. Cheers, and we'll see you next time.